Hi, this is Billy Bean here with another segment of Billy Bean Sci-Fi, the None to Yet series, chapter 37, Shared Breath. And so, I'll give a little summary and what happened in the previous chapter 36. We had a group from the planet None to Yet on the Soul Eater's Black Planet, the moon, where they had gone to rescue about six or seven uh, males who had been kidnapped from the Stillness Island on Nana to Yet by the so female Soul Eater warriors because they didn't have males on who could reproduce on their planet, so they would go around and kidnap males take the souls out of their bodies and put them in the bodies of their males. So, uh, but they had been rescued. A military group led by General Nakobe and supported by the shadow leader Anichi had gone to uh, the moon uh, on the Nenetiyet's mothership, the Victory, that had then been taken over by an alien mechanical particles. And so another individual from Nana to Yet, Abby Jake John, who was in his 90s and on his returning, meaning for the last two years, uh, usually about two years, individuals who uh, had lost all their family members and usually were in their 90s, went about visiting uh, childhood places and friends it was called the returning and then they usually uh, passed from none to yet to their heaven uh, with their god why and their family members and friends and he was abby jake john was a retired uh, ai engineer and it was necessary, he uh, was able to write software, and then um, a rescue ship headed up by the Black Hawk Warriors uh, took Abby Jake John to the mothership Victory. They were able to get on, and then he made it to the core of the ship, but it was necessary that he give up his life while he was uploading the software. He was actually strangled by the alien mechanical particles. And because he was, he was 90 and was on his returning trip, he wasn't a candidate to be uh, revived. And so he passed, which was what he was in the process of of completing this life and so he went out as a hero so then uh, they were all returning to none to yet having successfully rescued the males and overcome the AI uh, takeover of the mothership victory and uh, and saving none to yet from also being taken over by the alien mechanical particles through the computer system on the victory. So everyone came home as heroes. And now we take a, a new turn and a character um, uh, uh, now is going, uh, Yasmin Cantori, a PPK, prophet, priest, and king. Uh, some of her male peers said, Oh, I, I didn't think a woman could be a king. And she said, Well, why? Uh, doesn't see individuals as male or female. He judges us by our spirit. So, some of us females, on none to yet, can be kings. And now we have, in this chapter, we'll have a new character. And I'll give you his description. His name is Nana Menti Ag Lassier. And he is from the uh, 
Nanatiet Sister Planet Marush. He's from the tribe Aglasir. He's in line to be a tribal elder. And so we have, now our story picks up. Yasmin Kantori, prophet, priest, and king, stepped boldly onto the plain of Sinar, land of two rivers, that was located on a sister planet of Nenetiyet. The two rivers, the Sweet River and the Rushing River, were believed to have watered the Garden of Y. The Garden of Y was now hidden in another dimension, or perhaps it was just an ancient story. Yasmin Kantori, prophet, priest, and king, now resolutely stood on the plain of Senar, on Nunatuyet's sister planet, Genesis. She was dressed in her battle uniform with her two swords. She waited for her tester. They would engage in a life and death contest that would lead to shared breath. Yasmin's and her tester would forever be bonded, as would their tribes. During the contest, they would exchange layers of their souls. Nenementi Aglosir appeared 100 steps across from her, dressed in his battle uniform, armed with an axe, a shield, and a knife. They bowed to one another, no greeting and no smile. The purpose of the shared breath contest was to train Yasmin Kantori to recognize the limit of her battle strength and when she must surrender. Nanamenti was still covered in his scars from his own shared breath contest. The Society of Warriors to which Yasmin and Nanamenti belonged, believed that a good commander must know what is the limit of his or her ability to resist in order to be the best leader of others. They met in midfield, and Yasmin lifted her two swords which were molded to her thighs and dedicated to Y. Her thoughts caused the swords to materialize, and they were covered with symbols that were linked to her DNA. She crossed her swords over her head, calibrating the frequency of the swords to her heartbeat and connecting the sword's AI to her mind. Her swords were activated. To be continued, I love you and we'll see you soon.